okay? Yeah. Do you want anything else? No, thanks. Oh, sorry, we're late, Pauline. We missed the bus. Well, that's OK. All those flaming buses. If you're early, they come late. And if you're a bit late, they come early. Yes, now, what do you want us to do first? Well, nothing, really. Martin's had his breakfast, and I've vacuumed and dusted and polished. Oh! Just look at the floral oh, tribute. It's very oh, very nice. Oh, look. Oh, look, this one's from Michelle. Oh, and Vicky, isn't oh, it? Look at the oh, oh, they oh, really are. They're beautiful. lovely. I like the red roses. Beautiful. Yes. Which one? Hello, Pauline. Oh, Auntie Bessie, I wasn't sure you'd come, but come in. I had a lot of time for Arthur, you know that. Yes, of course. It's uh, just that it's such a long way. I, I, it was only right I should pay my respects. Yeah. Oh, you haven't met Gerald, have you? Gerald, this is Pauline. I do. How do you do? Gerald drove me here. I couldn't have faced the coach. Oh, I see. I've heard a lot about you. Uh, my sincere condolences. Thank you. Well, um, come on through. This is Ethel. Ethel Skinner. And, of course, you know Auntie Nelly. Yes. Uh, this is Gerald. Oh, pleased to meet you, I'm sure. How do you do? Well, I'll uh, go and put the kettle on. No, no, you sit yourself down. I'll do it. I'll see. She hasn't changed much. Is it going to be like this all day? Like what? Sitting here in silence. Will you tell me? You're the one that ran off. I did not run off. I stayed at Pat's for the night. Oh, just for the night? Yeah. So you ain't come back to collect your stuff or something? No, you're being stupid. Oh, I'm being stupid, am Yes. I? We had an argument and I went to stay with a friend. That's it. And we do this after every argument, do we? No. Well, just this one? No, I was angry. So you thought you'd go around Pat's for the night and slag me off, yeah? No. Look, we talked about it. Of course we did, but I didn't slag you off. So I suppose you told her what a great bloke I was, did you? I just told her we'd had an argument, that's all. That is our business, all right? Look, I'm back now. Does it matter? Well, it matters to me, yeah. All right, Phil, maybe I shouldn't have left, but then again, you didn't exactly beg me not to go, did you? Oh, so now I've got to beg you, have I? Why do you have to twist everything I say, eh? Look, can't we just at least be civil to each other? We have got Arthur's funeral in a couple of hours, remember? Yeah, well, uh... We can get on for Arthur's funeral. We can get on so we don't upset Ben. It's just a shame we can't do it for us, innit? When are you moving out then? Oh, at the weekend. What's Peggy got to say about it? Not much, but she ain't got much choice, is she? Cheers. Have you ever noticed how old people seem to love funerals? Eh? No, they do, don't they? Look at them. You'd think they'd leave well alone, wouldn't you, with them being next in line? Grass. Yeah, well, thoughts like that are best kept to yourself. Yes, mate. Peggy. Yes, Some of the blokes are asking for the app. Well, give them what they want. Yeah, but I mean, do I charge them or what? Hey? Eh? Is it being funeral? You now says a free bar, darling, and Arthur will have to bury himself. think she's playing at turning up with her gentleman friend. Well, he seems very nice. That's not the point, is it? I mean, what's he got to do with Arthur? Well, didn't he know him? Of course he didn't. He's just the latest in a long line of Betty's fancy men. You could fill the Albert Hall with her cast-offs. I wish she'd cast one of them my way. You wouldn't want the metal. Not exactly fussy, is her Betty never has been. 
fur coat and no drawers, Lou used to call them. All right, ladies. Oh, yeah. How are we doing? Okay. Everything's really over the road. I just thought we'd get enough drink. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Auntie Betty. Hello, love. Oh, how are you? Oh, are you bearing up? Try me best, you know. Auntie Betty. This is Ruth. Hiya. The new bride. <laughs> well, not exactly new. He's very naughty not bringing you down to see me. We will soon, I promise you. Well, this is Gerald. Uh, he drove me here. Gerald, pleased to meet you. How's you doing? All right. Where's Mum? Oh, she went out for a bit of fresh air. What? Just a little walk. Well, someone should have gone with her. Oh, well, we did off. Uh, she said she wanted to be on her own for a bit. The cars are going to be here in half an hour. I did say she shouldn't be left on her own. Only after she'd gone. Well, she'll be okay. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For the last week or so, I've been searching the Bible for, for something that said everything I wanted to say about Dad. But I couldn't find anything. And I was reading through one of Michelle's old textbooks and um, I found this. I know who my father was, why he was. I heard his life beneath me. His pounding heart, his very breath. Imagine, I beseech thee. A son's head on a father's chest, a giant hand, his crown. O oh, sweet rhythmic rise and fall, a love in which to drown. It mattered not what he did, what glories he achieved, the day he held me. 
as a child is everything I need. He was my son, my warmth, my light, the thing that gave me life. I love him now as I loved him then. Come sunset like a knife. And so I sought a memory before I let you rest. I chose the day. You took my head and laid it on your chest. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? We have entrusted our brother Arthur to God's merciful keeping. And we now commit his body to the earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. Can you go back with Mama Martin? What? I'll see you back at the house. Oh, what's going on? Please. Just do it. Mark. Thought you'd see the job through, did you? No. You don't understand. I just wanted to pay my respects. What do you know about respect? You took a whole family and ate your way through it like a cancer. Yeah, I know what I've done. No, you don't. How can you know what you've destroyed unless you've had it yourself? But you haven't, have you? You're just a sad, lonely little man who couldn't get a life. So you thought you'd take someone else's? No, it wasn't like that. My dad was twice the man you are. How did you ever think you could take his place? I didn't think that. I knew I couldn't take his place. Look, Mark, I know you must hate me, Major. Oh, I hate you, all right. But not because you're the snippet little git you've always been. It's because of what you're doing now. No. My dad was a good man. He taught me the difference between right and wrong. And I hate you for making me do this. Oh! <laughs> It was a lovely service, Pauline. You did him proud. It's just it's all happened so quickly. I don't feel as I've had a chance to say goodbye properly. Well, that's the thing these days. <laughs> no, I ain't about. That vicar's probably got another one in half an hour. Roy, why don't you see how the tea's coming on, love? Oh, yeah, right. Same with everything these days. Motorways, telephone banking, one-hour photo developing drive through restaurants. Everybody's in a hurry. Talking of which, shouldn't you be setting off soon? You've got a long drive back. Oh, no, we've got plenty of time. We may even stay the night. I'll never understand it. What? what? Telephone banking. I mean... How do you put your money in? She didn't come up. Not till this morning. Have you got it sorted now? <sighs> no, not really. Well, oh, she's still got the up about Ricky and the dodgy mark. No, no, it ain't just that. I don't know, she just don't seem interested in anything other than dirty nappies and baby food. She's obsessed with me. Well, there's a name for that now. Hey? Postnatal depression. 
No, she ain't depressed. It wasn't her I was talking about. <sighs> Tired leaf off me. Oh, come on, bro. You gotta admit this can't all be down to Kathy. I mean, you haven't exactly been yourself lately, have you? Cheers, bro. Thanks for your help. <sighs> I'm looking for you. I'm sorry I had to go with you earlier. Oh, it's okay. You probably deserved it. No, you didn't. It was me. Just get a bit fed up sometimes. With me? No, not just with you. Everything. Things just get on top of me, that's all. So what do you want to do then? Two. Well, do you want to get away for a while or go see your mum again? No. Well, what then? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So what was all that about? She's just a bit unhappy at the moment. What's she got to be unhappy about? Let her row last time. What about this time? She's lucky she's got a man who does what you do. I think we're just stuck in a rut. You sure it's not something else? Like what? Oh, she's up to old tricks again, is she? No. You're sure? Yes. I think she just wants to spend more time together. What's wrong with that? Nothing. If that's all it is. Where are you? What's Grant Mitchell doing here? Oh, leave it, Mark. Not today. Anyway, how's it going here? Yeah, fine. Look, everyone's been asking for you. Where have you been? I just needed a few minutes on my own. Put a few ghosts to rest. Wait here, have a drink. It just seems to have got worse as far as I could see. I know. Someone should phone the council about it. It's a disgrace. I remember when we had a road sweeper every day of the week, weekends as well. I think they should get all the unemployed out there and refuse them benefit unless they've collected three bags of rubbish on the way. That's a bit extreme, isn't it? You think we should pay them for doing nothing, do you? Unemployment isn't a crime, you know. It is in my book. There's plenty of jobs if you look hard enough. I don't think that's true, you know. Of course it is. You've only got to look in the papers. Pages up on the row. No. Get them all sweeping the roads. That's what I say. It's all they're fit for. Well, I often used to sweep the roads. He said it made him feel proud to think he was doing something for everyone. He was a gentleman. A gentle man. He saw the good in everyone, much more than I ever did. Do you know, he'd sometimes cry when he was reading the newspapers said he couldn't believe what people did to each other <laughs> Paul don't upset yourself <sighs> what am I going to do without him um, what's going on here I'm not going to miss him so much I oh, know mum we all do hey come here come on Come on now. So the geezer gets home, chucks the ferret on the table, and his missus says, What's that? And he says, Never mind, just teach it how to cook. And then go and pack your bags. Keep <laughs> <laughs> it down, boys, please. Paul is upset in there. <laughs> she okay, Pat? Yeah, I'm out with her. Fresh cup of tea might help her. She was doing all right this morning. Yeah, I think it's called up with her. Where's Kath? Uh, she's gone over over Sydney to check on the kids. Oh. Do you want me to go and get her? I thought she could sit with Paul in for a bit. Tell you what you could do for me, though. What's that? We well, you know that geezer that Betty brought. Gerald, or whatever his name is, take him over the road or something. Why? What's he done? Let's just say if he puts his foot in it once again, he'll be limping home. How are we going to get hold of him, though? Oh, well, I'll send him in here. You do the rest. There you go, Pat. Thanks, love. Through these three wells. Best thing that, a good cry. No use bottling it up. Here you go, Paul. Oh, thanks, Pat. Sorry, everyone. Don't apologise, love. Most natural thing in the world. A wife grieving for a husband. Gerald, you couldn't do us a favour, could you? Only the boys are having a spot of trouble in the kitchen. Trouble? 
Yeah, the kettle's blown or something and none of them seem to know how to fix it. Have they tried it in another socket? Check the fuse? No, no, I don't think so. Check the simple things first. Process of elimination. I won't be long. What did you have to bring him for? I beg your pardon? He's done nothing but shoot his big mouth off ever since he got here. Well, at least I've got a man, which is more than could be said for some. But don't you think we should stay at the house? No, no, it's a, it's a family tradition. The men folk always go for a few pints after the sausage rolls. Look, if you've got something on your mind, Cathy, I'd rather you just tell me what it was. What? Well, you haven't said a word to me since we left Mark's. So? Well, even Ted was embarrassed. You must be ignoring me for a reason. So why don't you just share it with me, eh? Just leave it, AC. You know it's not the time. No! If you've got a problem, I'd like to know what it is. You wouldn't. Yes, I would. All right. You asked for it. I think that you are a selfish, ungrateful bitch. What? Ian is working his things with the bone for you and the kids, and all you care about is yourself. Has he been talking to you? No. So where has all this come from then? Oh, I'm not blind. I can see what you're doing. Have you any idea how lucky you are? How many other men do you think will do what Ian does, eh? Looking up the kids all the time, always putting you first. I know what he does. No, you don't. Because if you did, you wouldn't treat him like oh, this. Oh, and what is it you think I'm doing? Making my son's life a misery. Oh, and he's told you that, has he? Well, he doesn't have to. And what right have you got to stick your nose in anywhere? What happens to him? Me and he's got nothing to do with you. He's my son. Yes, well, he's my husband. Well, perhaps you need reminding of that. I don't. And what is that supposed to mean? You heard. Come on, Cindy. What is he now? Getting bored at home? Grass looking greener on the other side. That's par for the course for you, I isn't it? I don't believe we're having this conversation. Well, you better believe it. Well, you could fool everyone else, Cindy, but I know you've old, remember? I've seen the signs before. You being moody, Ian not knowing why. <laughs> You're sick. Maybe. But I'm not stupid. Ian found you in the gutter and I told him that's where you belonged, but he wouldn't have it. So now I'm telling you, if history repeats itself, it won't be Ian you have to worry about. It'll be me. Does anyone want in now, Steve? No, no, no. It was a lovely spread. I must thank Ian again. Where have all the men gone? I think they popped over the road. Oh, typical. Oh, they're probably better off there. It's where my Arthur would have been. Loved his pint. My Gerald doesn't drink. Not to excess, anyway. So where is he now, then? If Gerald's gone, it was just to be sociable. Oh, yes. <laughs> I remember my William getting so sociable, he couldn't walk up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good man, too. Just about the same age as Arthur when he died. You cope. Only the good die young. Oh, that doesn't say much for me, does it? <laughs> Remember my Arthur when we started courting? Just 21 he was. There was nothing of him. He's like a young Frank Sinatra. Jet black hair and a smile that would make you go all goose pimply. He was a clumsy devil though. He was always tripping or falling over something and everything. He used to get all embarrassed. It just made me love him more. You know, I like you. I like you too, George. Gerald. Nigel. Pleased to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> so he's supposed to be driving overnight. We're putting him up here, aren't we? What about his other arm? Uh, Pat can sort it out. This was her idea. Hey. Talk, talk with the devil. Ladies. Can I offer you a little light? <laughs> Gerald. What you done to him? Disgusting. And at a funeral as well. No. We gotta get home. It's all right, it's all being sorted. We're putting you up here tonight and you can go home in the morning. We'll set everything over here anyway. I was all finished. Paul wanted a bit of time to herself. Let's hope she doesn't come in here and see this. How long do you intend to keep this up? Now don't you two start, please. It's not me. You've done nothing but criticise me since I arrived. If the cap fits. Why don't you just come out and say it? Say what? Charlie O'Brien. Never heard of him. 
Carly O'Brien. He finished with her to go out with me. I think you'd better listen to this, Gilbert. <laughs> Rubbish. She's never forgiven me. Ladies, ladies, I don't think this is the time. Do Everyone you? knows why he went off with you. Yes, because I gave him something he wanted. Yes, and you gave it to everyone else as well. <laughs> what if I did? There was a war on. It was the only thing that wasn't ready. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> What's going on? Well, she started it. You silly old cow. No wonder you ended up on your own. Yeah, and look what you ended up with. Now, that's enough. Don't think you ought to think about Pauline. That's the reason we're here, isn't it? That's right. If you two can't get on, then stay away from each other. Don't worry. I intend to. Gerald. <laughs> Look, I really don't think you should be on your own. No, honestly, Mark, it's what I want. Just a couple of hours, and anyway, I've got to pack for tomorrow. If you don't mind having Martin. Of course not, but Ruth can do that. Why don't I come back with you? No, Mark, please. Okay. Will you come over if you need me, yeah? Thank you for everything you've done today. I would have been lost without you. 